First question is from Nina Worgen. How do you know if you have metabolic damage or if you have a healthy m- metabolic rate? All right. So first off, uh, to be clear, the term metabolic damage was a term coined by the fitness industry um, really to kind of illustrate or explain a slow metabolism, right? So somebody who metabolism naturally doesn't burn a lot of calories. You know, I could say, hey, your metabolism doesn't burn a lot of calories, but I could probably sell more stuff if I say you have met- metabolic damage. Okay, so that's yeah. that's an important want thing. You to feel bad about it. Yeah, it's an important thing to, and we've said it before. I was we, gonna say I'm just as guilty. Of yeah, using we've this. used it's a, it's a simple, it's an easy way to get somebody across like how you fucked up their metabolism. So right, we, we need to address it. Right, but to be clear, it doesn't mean that you're that you're sick or ill or unhealthy or something's wrong right. with your metabolism. In fact, if your metabolism is not burning many calories unless you are ill or you've really, really starved yourself or really extreme in, in those uh, cases. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah, you have a healthy metabolism. It's slowing down because you've you've told it to. You've taught it to slow down through maybe reducing your calories for too long, going on diets, not being active, maybe training in a way that tells your body to have mm-hmm. a slow metabolism. Lots and lots of cardio, no strength training, for example, can do that. So how do you know if you have a healthy metabolism? Well, if you're if you're unhealthy in other ways, then maybe something's going on, but you're probably okay with your metabolism. Now, if your question is, how do I get my metabolism to speed up or should I get my metabolism to speed up? It's a very personal question. It's individual. Um, do you Are you happy with the amount of calories that you burn all the time on your own? Or do you find yourself feeling like you're starving Eating your your daily uh, caloric uh, well, maintenance. Let's talk about some. Let's talk about some examples of where we've seen uh, the most metabolic damage. In other words, like yeah. what types of clients? So what competitors I, or ultra marathoners? Right. So yeah. so what I what I see what I see this uh, most common in like the clients that I would get that had this uh, the most uh, severe metabolic damage. And really, what that is, and I do that in air quotes because, like Sal is saying, that it's not really damage. It's doing what you've told it to do. But why is your metabolism so slow? The people that that, that tend to be the worst for me that I would get um, are clients that were really overweight. So they were beyond 50 pounds overweight and they had gained and lost weight for many, many years up and down. And many times it looked mm-hmm. like this really hardcore uh, restrict. Mm-hmm. They they went on some crazy weird, you know, lettuce or cabbage diet a lot, or they would just eat way less or fast or, mm-hmm. you know. Slim fast. Yeah, exactly. They would do some really low calorie ways of losing weight and they would lose a bunch of weight that way. And then they would go back and they would binge and they would do this yo-yo dieting for many years. Mm-hmm. And, and over time, you know, it went from they were 50 pounds overweight to 60 pounds overweight to 70 pounds and eventually 100 pounds or so overweight. And they had been doing that to their, their body. That's case number one that I'd see that's most common with like somebody who has a really, really slow metabolism. The other is like what Justin was alluding to, like your athletes or your competitors that are on lower type calorie diets and they have a lot of stress, whether it be exercise, running for a very long time, um, or just eating really, really low calorie for a very, very long time. Those tend to be the most, and with lots of stress, mm-hmm. those two things tend to be the most common like offenders for me as far as clients. Yeah, especially yeah. if it's a lot of um, endurance type training, um, that's where you start to see the metabolism yeah. adapt. Really, that's what's happening. Your metabolism is adapting. So yeah. if you are doing an activity that requires very little strength uh, and little muscle, and you're doing a lot of it, and doing that activity burns calories, um, then what will happen is your, your, your body will start to adapt. And the way it adapts is it says, okay, we're burning lots of calories during this activity. We need endurance. We don't need a lot of muscle and strength. Um, let's learn how to conserve calories. We pare muscle down. We slow the metabolism down so that this person can continue to do this and become a more efficient, better endurance machine. And so you see this with people who do like the cardio fanatics mm-hmm. who come in and I would see these in the gym. I'd manage gyms and there would be those members that would come in and they'd do the same thing every time they'd come in five or six days a week. Mm-hmm. They'd get on the elliptical for 40 minutes. They'd get on the treadmill for 40 minutes. They'd get on another piece of cardio for 40 minutes and they'd do that every day and then they'd be, but they'd still be 
25 or 30 pounds overweight. And it's almost impossible to convince them otherwise because they've like conditioned it in their brain that whatever they eat, they look at the calories of what they're eating and they want to equate that to the amount of calories that they're burning in the gym, not knowing that over this long period of time that they've been doing the same exact thing, they've actually been slowing their metabolism down, which now brings uh, you know any excess of their, uh, their maintenance calories, which their maintenance calories goes down, ends up uh, starting to stack up against them. Dude, there was this guy that used to come in, and you guys probably, because you guys were in Santa Teresa too, a uh, black dude would wear sweater and do cardio and just sweat through the whole sweater. Yeah. And he'd come in every morning, every single morning. I remember this guy. We used to have to tell him to put towels underneath his, uh, yeah. underneath his uh, bike. Yes. So he did, just that's all he did. He did cardio. He'd come in and do a ton of cardio. That's it. And he was yeah. probably 20 pounds overweight, so not like super overweight, about 20 pounds. But did cardio, 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 never touched the weights, never touched the machines. And I ended up striking up conversations with him, asked him what his goals are. Oh, I just want to maintain. I said, well, do you, you know, at the time I was trying to see if you'd be interested in training because I could see that he was doing the same thing all the time. And I said, well, if you could have another goal, what would it be? And so I'd like to get a little leaner. I said, oh, well, um, have you looked at your diet? And he goes, oh, I track my diet. And we talked about diet and he did. He had a booklet and he wrote everything down, had all his calories down. And this guy was consuming under 2,000 calories a day. He wasn't a small guy. He was as tall as I was, probably, I don't know, 200 pounds, could you know stand to lose about 20 pounds. Eating under 2,000 calories a day would come in and do routinely an hour and a half of cardio um, every single day. And that was really one of the first times that it dawned on me. I was like, man, this guy, his body has learned to burn so few calories that he could literally, 1,800 calories is how he maintains 20 pounds overweight. Yeah. And so I talked to him about lifting weights. I wasn't able to get through to him. He continued to do what he did. But again, this is what your body does. It's just how you train your body. When you when we use the word workout, switch that with the word train. You are training your body when you're working out. And the reason why you're training your body is you're training your body to get better at what you're teaching it to do or what your workouts are doing. And if your workouts are high calorie burning, require very little muscle, um, then your body's going to learn to adapt uh, to that workout by slowing down its metabolism. If your workouts don't necessarily burn a ton of calories but require a lot of strength and muscle, well, now your body's like, let's build this big, let's build this muscle, and we can be uh, less efficient with calories and speed up our burn. I think this is so nuanced because it's this big spectrum. Right. And you have like extreme metabolic damage on one side, and then you have everything in the middle. Right. Like, you know, you have a healthy metabolism, you have a metabolic, like really extreme metabolic damage, and then you have this everything in between. And so it's so nuanced and individualized that it's like, uh, where am I on that? And it's all about what, how you're training it. Yeah. So you can you don't have to be this extreme marathon runner to feel your metabolism slowing down. You don't necessarily have to have metabolic damage to feel your metabolism slowing down. If you eat less and less calories and exercise more and more and more, especially if you're doing things like cardio, which doesn't demand a lot of muscle, you're teaching the body to become very efficient and mm -hmm. not need a lot of calories.